Hello everybody, this is evangelist Caleb Wampler greeting you here near Seoul, South Korea. Recently I was in a gospel campaign in a nation in South Asia that I can't name for safety reasons. While there, a battalion of police officers and security officers, 15 to be exact, marched into the tent while I was in the middle of a gospel message. In this area, it isn't exactly legal to do what we were doing as a foreigner. And while ministering, many guys with AK-47s begin to march towards the platform. In that moment, I had a decision to make. And in that moment, I decided that I was going to skip to the end of my message. I was going to cast the nets for salvation and harvest. And in that moment, over 8,000 people stood to their feet to give their lives to Jesus. One of the most amazing and supernatural miracles that I've seen to date. Now in the moment, I was worried about my own life, as many of you might be. But what I realized later on was that there was actually a greater miracle that took place. In that moment, in the face of what could be death, all 8,000 of those people stood to their feet to give their lives and follow Jesus in the face of potential death. 8,000 miracles took place that night. In that moment, I actually was saved myself as they came onto the platform. It turned out that the chief of police from that region decided to give his life to Jesus. In the coming moments, I prayed for the Holy Spirit to sweep through the, the tent like a wind. And in that moment, there was an audible wind that flowed into the enclosed tent. One of the most supernatural miracles I had also seen today. In that moment, many people were filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, began to speak in other tongues. Others saw visions of Jesus. Others saw angels flying in the tent. People dropped to the ground as demons fled one by one and people were filled with the Holy Spirit. When I later returned to my room that night, I had an email from one of our intercessory prayer partners. And at the exact moment where I faced what could have been certain death, I had an email from an intercessor that said, I felt like I was supposed to pray for you at this exact moment. When I traced the time back, it was the exact moment my life was on the line and the lives of those 8,000 people were on the line. It was the power of intercession and the power of prayer that saved all of our lives in the natural, but more importantly, in the eternal. I come to you on location from the hallowed grounds of Prayer Mountain near Seoul, South Korea, a church that has claimed to have over 800,000 people, the largest church in the world. Many years ago, Dr. Yang Yi Cho founded this church and after writing numerous books and impacting literally hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people, I'm honored to now be here today with the saints that have went before me and those that are currently here now and filling the hallowed prayers that have gone before me. It's certainly a special place here and I'm glad to be here today. And what better place than to talk about the power of prayer. Prayer has had an influential and enormous impact on my life. And now that I travel the world and do gospel crusades globally, we fight much spiritual warfare, and there have been many things that we have faced over time. I have walked the grounds today and have been so amazed and uh, feeling the presence of an almighty God just, uh, just resting upon me while I've walked these grounds today. It's been absolutely amazing. I've, I've actually been feeling a sense that it's actually made me want to go to tears because of the presence of God that is here. So I come to you with that motivation behind me today to encourage you in your prayer life. There is a curious passage found in Revelation chapter 8 verses 3 through 5 and I'd like to read it to you. 
Another angel who had a golden censer came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense to offer with the prayers of all God's people on the golden altar in front of the throne. The smoke of the incense together with the prayers of God's people went up before God from the angel's hand. When the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar and hurled it to the earth, and there came peals of thunder, rumblings, flashes of lightning, and an earthquake. In this curious passage, we have the prayers of the saints going up before the Almighty God. There's an angel assigned to actually capture our prayers in a bowl and to bring them forth with the incense from God and to, and to fill it with fire from the altar the fire that never goes out. Oftentimes when we pray for things, we might pray one time or two times or three times, and then we might give up. We might ask God, why did that prayer request never happen? How come this thing didn't happen for me? How come this didn't go on the way that I had hoped that it would? And oftentimes with prayer, we don't realize that our prayers are actually accumulating into a bowl that an angel of the Lord is assigned to steward and to withhold. His job is to bring those things through to the Father by first taking them through the fire. Now, why do they have to go to the fire? Well, you know, because we pray those things that oftentimes maybe aren't God's will. Sometimes we might pray for luxury items that maybe aren't intended in God's will for us to have because maybe we would forget about God by having them. And maybe that isn't a benefit to our life. Maybe it is. Maybe in His prosperity and His blessing on our life, He wants to do those kind things for us. Maybe it's requests with money. Maybe it's requests with certain things that we are praying to have. Maybe it's certain things that aren't in His will, and we are praying things that maybe aren't part of them. By bringing those things into the fire of the altar, there is a purification process that takes place with the fire that never goes out from the altar. During that purification place, sometimes we can grow anxious in the waiting. Sometimes in that place we will grow weary and tired and want to give up and then stop praying. By the purification process, you can imagine that the things that don't belong turn to ash and are no longer part of the bowl. So hence, the bowl gets a little bit less full. But by the time the bowl is full, after passing through the fire and going up before the Lord, there is a response from heaven that cannot be reckoned with by anything else in all of creation. Flashes of lightning and earthquakes and rumblings responding from heaven down to our earth on those situations we have been praying for. As I have looked at the hundreds of thousands of prayers and imagined the millions upon tens of millions of prayers that have come up from these grounds, I can only imagine how many prayers of revival have been prayed, how many prayers of expectation have been prayed, how many prayers of faith have been prayed, how many prayers of healing have been prayed, how many prayers of harvest have been prayed. My heart is stirred here today because as I pray with the saints who have gone before me and the saints that are here, my heart has been moved because we are bringing our prayers before an almighty God who will respond to them as he wills it in Jesus' name. And my friends, it is not for us to grow weary, but to continue to do good, to continue to press forward for the prize that is there in front of us, to continue to press on and to see a response from heaven that would shake the foundations of the earth. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12 that there is a great shaking that is going to take place. And when that shaking does take place, everything that can be shaken will be shaken. But what is unshakable will remain. How do you know what can't be shaken? What can't be shaken are the things that are God's will, that have been purified in the fire of the altar, that have withstood the test of time and humanity that we go through, and that have not been given up on. In this powerful process of prayer, of response from heaven is sure to come. And my friends, don't you give up before the time of that response. Don't you grow weary at the time of your visitation, because when he comes, everybody around you is going to know 
that your life has been kissed by heaven. My friends, don't give up. Press on. Move forward towards the prize. Spend more time on your knees than you do on your phones. Spend more time in your word than you do on your TVs. Spend more time in the presence of God than you do in all of the other meaningless things we find ourselves doing. And through that heart, unveiled before the Lord, we will be made clean and new, and we will pray with purity before a loving Father who is desiring to extend His arms to you today. God bless you here from Seoul, South Korea.